pray for you and ask you to just open yourself up to the, to the Lord, to the Spirit of God. And the reason I'm saying that is because so many times we talk about church and we talk about all this other stuff and we don't talk about the Holy Ghost enough. And if we don't have the Holy Ghost doing things in our lives, we don't have anything going on that's really real. He is the one doing everything today. So I'd like for you to just submit yourself to him today and allow him to just move in your life and speak to your heart any way he wants to. And uh, let that just be a blessing for all of us. Amen. So let's pray together. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for being such a wonderful father to us. Like the song said, we sing that you've, you've been a father and you've been a friend. And you're both to us still. And we just thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for loving us and caring us and running after us and tearing down walls to get to us and breaking down stories. And most of all, we thank you, Father, for making yourself real to each one of us so that we know who you are. It's not some religious thing. It's not church. We know who you are. And we welcome you here today. Holy Spirit, have your way. We ask in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Well, the first, first thing I want to, uh, to deal with is in Proverbs, just very briefly in Proverbs, the, the third chapter. Uh, I'm probably just going to have to read this to you because I don't think I put him. But there's seven main steps to this. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Amen? amen. Trust in the Lord. Lean not your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That's three things you have to do. And right in the middle of that, he does something. It says, and he will direct your path. Isn't that good? Now, the more noise you make, the shorter I preach. <laughs> that's the way. That's it. That's what we're looking for. So we did three things that you have to do. And then he directs your path. And then after he does direct your path, don't be wise in your own eyes, it says. No, don't think you did that. And... Fear the Lord, which you have to do in order to stay in line and depart from evil. So those are the things that he says for us to do. And uh, we have three for us, then he does his thing, and then we move on from there. Now, keys and ears. Let me move to this. There are two things that we're going to do in here today. And one of them is preparing to hear the Holy Spirit speak. Because he is speaking. He's talking. He's directing. He's moving. He's doing what he's doing. And the second thing is preparing to turn to turn the tumblers in a lot to set people free. The church is here for a purpose. We are here to set people free. And we're here to introduce people to the one who does that so that they can come into this great kingdom with us. And there are a lot of things written in, the, you know, in Revelation when it's talking about the churches. But all the things that are written, all the books that are written about all those little churches, how, how this one did that and this one did that and this one did that. But all those things are a smoke screen to hide what God's trying to say to us about those, those churches in Revelation. What he's saying is, hear. That's the key word. Hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches. Don't just hear what the churches did. Hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches. In order for that to happen, you have to have ears. You have to be able to hear. And so, when you look at that, you know, we're going to expand on that just a little bit because um, hearing God is so important. If I'm going to tell you the truth. I really believe that I hear him pretty good. And that's not bragging. I, I think I've, in 51 or two years I've been a Christian, I've kind of tuned myself to him. And if it wasn't for that, Amy wouldn't be the worship leader here because I heard him about her. Tyler wouldn't be the pastor here because I heard him about Tyler. And I could go on around the room here to, to many of you. So many times that Gino, God has spoken to me about Gino and Susie, just spoken the truth to me about them. And I... And I'm so excited that he did use me for that. You know, it's just exciting to, to know that. So hearing him is so important. And uh, so let's go to Luke 11:13. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, how, what's that got to do with keys and ears? When he gives you the Holy Spirit, he's not just giving you a gift of eternal life by itself or gifts or tongues or whatever it might be. He's giving you a guide. He's giving you an instructor. He's giving you an interpreter. He's giving you everything you need to be able to hear 
what he is saying. I'm going to give you my spirit, he says. And when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. He's going to interpret everything to you so that you'll understand what I'm doing. And I won't keep it a secret from you what I'm doing. And so when he said that, when he put that in Luke, he said, if you give good gifts to your children, look at this wonderful gift that God has given you and me. Now, if you're born again here today, the Spirit of God is living in you. You hear that every Sunday, I bet you. Every Sunday up here. The Holy Spirit's living in you. The problem is, sometimes we're not living in Him. And we need to live in Him. We need to find our, our life and our being and everything that we are in Him. And so, God being a good Father, and we're just, we're just the best of us are just average. But God being a good Father has chosen to give you the very best He has. Amen? Yes. Amen. Now, remember, the louder you are, the shorter I preach. He has given you the best he has. Amen. There you go. You need to say it there anyway, because it's true. And then in John 16, we're going to go right straight to another. This is a whole new dispensation now when he gets into this. Jesus said, now you have sorrow. But I'll see you again, and your heart will rejoice. And your joy no man will take from you. And in that day you'll ask me for nothing. Isn't that amazing that Jesus said, from, from now on, don't ask me for anything. You ask the Father. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. And he gives it to you through the work of the Holy Ghost. So every answer you get from prayer comes from the Holy Ghost. It comes through the instrumentation of the Holy Ghost. God is the giver. But the Holy Spirit is the one who's getting the job done. And that's why I'm not preaching on the Holy Spirit today, but there's no way in the world you can do all this without making a point about who he is. And, and it is a he, it's not an it. So anyway, when he said, if you ask the Father in my name, and the word there is a noma. I've talked about that numerous times here. He's saying in my authority, you go to the Father in my authority. Y'all remember Esther? Esther, if a, if a queen or anybody went into the to the king's presence without permission, without having authority to come in there, they were killed. They, killed, they were struck dead. I mean, his wives, anybody. And Esther took a gamble, and God gave her authority to show her face around that post so that that's the way I see it. And the king saw her looking around that post and said, instead of saying, what's she doing in here? I believe God put the authority for her in his heart and he spoke and said what do you, come on up here and tell me what you want and you know the story if you don't know the story read it because I'm not preaching on that today so Anoma is really authority it's like being an ambassador As a matter of fact we're ambassadors for Christ the scripture says and when you're an ambassador for a country it's predisposed that you're going to do and presupposed also that you're going to you're going to do what that nation what their morals are, what their aims are, what their goals are, and that's what you propagate. And so if you're an ambassador for Christ, how much more should we be propagating the things that are of God and of his kingdom? That's what we need to be doing. And so we need to do that in his kingdom. Everything that we should propagate about him, everything we should push out about him is according to his will. Now I say that because sometimes we push things that are about our will. I'm, I'm not going to talk against any denomination or anything, but I'm going to say a couple of things. Some of the Pentecostal denominations have rules. And so this is what you have to do to be in the kingdom. If you're not doing these things, you're not going to be fit for the kingdom. And others have this thing where, well, you've got to be baptized by immersion. And no one says you've got to be sprinkled. And no one says you have to be poured. I don't know of one that does it any other way than that, and I, I, except... I know what's right. <laughs> but if you, if you begin to push something that is what you believe God wants, then you're getting in trouble, see? So what we need to do is, is say, what does God want? God wants us to love one another like he's loved us. He wants us to love each other just like he's loved us. He wants us to help each other, to help each other to stand and, and to bring glory and honor to the Father's name. That's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to put a bunch of rules for us. Now, let me tell you, there are rules, okay? I don't want to get away from that. Where are the rules? He will write them where? On your heart. 
He will write them on your heart. He won't write them on a pamphlet where if you join the Christian Center Church, you got to quit going to movies. You got to quit, you know, you can't drink anything. You can't smoke. You can't, you know, can't chew tobacco. I finally quit that. <laughs> Out of all the things I quit. <laughs> Out of all the things I quit, that was the hardest, believe it or not. Uh, well, cleaning up my language, I guess, was a little harder, but <laughs> quitting drinking, quitting drinking was first, then quitting smoking was next, and then chewing the back. I quit chewing the back so many times. I'd throw the bag out the window of the car, got to deal with me, and I'd throw it out the car at night when I'm going somewhere to preach, and I'd turn around, drive back, get out, and have my flashlight out there, my chewing the back. <laughs> Anybody ever done that? <laughs> yeah, there's two or three back there that have. <clears throat> well, it's the way it goes, you know. But, but anyway, there's not a rule here about, about that. The rule here is obey God. Amen. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. He's got enough rules. He's got enough that, and he'll equip you to do his. We can't equip you to follow our rules. But anything he tells you to do, any instruction he gives you for, he is going to equip you for that. You won't have any problem getting that job done. So, in Luke 12, let's go to Luke 12 for just a second here. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I'm going to just be honest with y'all. I've been preaching 51 years, I guess, maybe nearly 52. And I still don't completely understand how he gives us the kingdom. So uh, it's okay, though. I mean, he, he said he did it, and I believe him, so that's good enough. If I don't understand, I don't understand. I used to tell people, I don't understand turnip greens either, but I know if you eat them, they're good for you. And I don't understand how it works, but I know that he's given me the kingdom, and I'm excited about it, even if I don't know what to do with it. But I'm going to tell you, the next thing he said was in Matthew, following along, right along the same thought. Matthew 16, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, he's not concerned about you abusing his authority. Did you know that? Because if you lie about your authority and if you, if you do something that he's not directing you to do, he's not worried about it because it doesn't work anyway. There are parameters, you know, and there's... It's not a universal access to his kingdom. It's not a universal, like a ro revolving door or something. It's not there. It's not a free ticket to do whatever you want to do in his kingdom. I, I visit the sheriff's office ever so often. And uh, the new sheriff's office out there is really nice. I mean, if they, next time they do a tour, if you hear about it, go through it. And it's just wonderful what they're doing out there. But... In order to go from one door to another, even to get in the front door and go from one door to another, you have a card. And you take this card and flash it in front of this little thing. Looks, you know, I, I keep thinking they're going to have an eye where you put your eye up to it. But they have a card, and then it'll turn green. You can open that door and go through. Everybody's card don't fit every door in the place because there are people that are in the drug task force. Nobody can go in there but the drug task force. There are people that are over here in in this other portion, and nobody can go in there but the people that are supposed to be in there. And they have a card. And every time you go through, it will tell, it will record in there that you went through that door at that particular time. And they know when you went in, how long you were there, and everything else. And you know, that, that, I think that's a good thing. There's certain pass cards. Phonies won't work. You can wave any card you want to up in front of it, you know, and it just won't work. But that's what God has done. It, the keys of the kingdom, and I want to emphasize, they're not keys to the kingdom. He gives us the keys of the kingdom. And there's a big difference. And if I've told you that before, then maybe you need to hear it again. They're keys of, they belong to the kingdom. And what they do, they unlock doors and unlock cells that people are trapped in, even yourself, that God has given you the keys of the kingdom to set people free from drug addiction, from alcoholism, from fear, from anger, from hatred, from everything you can think of. And there are also keys in there that lead them into the good side of every one of those things. Help you out of a bad thing and into a good thing. So every time these things, every time we think about that, we need to think about these. And it's not a combination like to a safe, 
because then you'd go up with a combination and you'd do it. When he gives you the key, and that key's going to work that time. I guess that's a good thing to point out too. Just because it worked this time doesn't mean it's going to work next time. Amen? That's why counseling and everything else has to be led of the Holy Ghost in order to be effective because everybody's different. Every case is different. And the only one that knows really what is needed there is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, I want to tell you something. Uh, most Christians in church feel like, yeah, he's right about, that's why we've got a pastor and that's why we've got elders. No, that's why we have you. That's why we have you. You're the ones to do this. God has given this to you to do. The whole body of Christ is to be effective in this. Everywhere you go, there's church. Every place you set your foot, there's church. And you're the pastor. And you're the one with the keys. And you're the one with the word from God. And you're the one that has to do it. Now, I don't believe he gives us a key ring. You know, and a bunch of keys on it. We keep sticking one in there. One of them works. You know? I actually picked mine up at the house. I, I got a ring of old keys. And I was going to bring it and show it to you. But that's not what he wants. He don't want us feeling around to try to find out what's needed. It, when something happens, something really happens, and you're, you're in a situation right there, and you say, I don't know what to do, suddenly you'll realize that he has supernaturally put a key in your hand that will heal that problem. I'm going to tell you a story, and I've, I've told it before, so I've told you here, you have to forgive me, I'll make it real short. In Panama City, I spoke down there one night years ago, 40-something years ago. And when I left there, I was going to somebody's house, told me to go turn right in the first house on the right. And I, I went, and I turned, I mean, told me to turn left first house. And I turned right and went to the first house. And when I knocked on the door, a lady opened the door a little ways, and long story short, there was so much depression coming through the door. I talked her into letting me in the house. She was standing there with a cocked pistol in her hand, fixing to blow her brains out, sent her son to the far end of the house so he wouldn't be in there where she was. I got it away from her. I got the enemy off her back. God had given me a key, one key after another for that one. And I opened the lock into her right there, and I took the gun away from her. I led her to the Lord. She got saved. She got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then she called her son out the back end of the house, and he got saved. And if I remember correctly, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was like 13 or 14. And uh, all because I turned the wrong way. Now, who did that? Where, where did I get credit for turning the wrong way? It looked like stupidity to me. That says to me, God can use ignorance and stuff. Can you say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, boy, I'm telling you. Well, all of a sudden, you'll suddenly, supernaturally, you're going to have in your possession the right key for the right door, and you may have to go through two or three doors before you're through, because I did that night. Now, let's go to the ears real quickly. Do we listen at times? Or maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Let's look at First Chronicles eleven seventeen. It says, David longed, and he said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well at Bethlehem that's at the gate. Now, there's a lot of books written about the wine and everything else. But the point is, it's not the point about why he wanted that particular one or anything else. The point for that story is that the ones closest to him heard what he just casually longed for. So God wants us to be close enough to him that if he just casually longs for you to go or be somewhere, he'll do it. I mean, we need to hear the whisper of his voice. But now, if you don't hear it in a whisper, he can yell. <laughs> Amen. The oh, yeah. Bible says he can sound like many waters when he talked. Scared you to death. So anyway, the object of that story is not about the well at Bethlehem or David longing to be there or remembering it was home or no. The, the, the object of that story is they heard him and they acted on what they heard. Risked their life. And because of that, he honored them by just pouring it out. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If I risk my life to bring you something, don't you pour it out. <laughs> if, if I risk my life to bring it to you, you better thank me and drink it right in front of me, okay? But you need to go about your business. 
and keeping an eye, an ear open for his voice. I've got a little dog named Jake I like to talk about a lot. Jake's my buddy. And uh, he had surgery the other day, and they gave him some kind of painkiller when I brought him home, and I thought he was ruined for life. I mean, he just, he, he didn't look at you, he wouldn't respond, he just, nothing. And I, I thought he was deaf, because I'd stand there and say, Jake, Jake, Jake. And then I'd, I'd pop my hand over his head like that. Come here. Nothing. Just laying dead still, right on my leg, right here on the chair. So I said something that would key him. I just quietly said, there's somebody at the front door. And that head came up, and there he went. Fell all over the place getting there. You know why? Because I hit a key word. We need to be tuned to God's key words. We need to be tuned to when he says, they're hurting, or they're needing, or they're this, or they're... We need to be tuned. Even if we're right in the middle of hearing, I mean, he was hearing the TV and me popping my hands, calling his name and everything. And I said the one word, the front door. That's all I had to say. Boom, he was gone. We need to be that tuned to what God's saying. Sometimes he speaks by hemming us up like cattle. Sometimes by heart desire. Sometimes he does it because the situation of the person won't let us get away with not doing something about it. I know you've been in some of those situations. People are always saying, you need to talk to my pastor. You need to talk to my pastor. You need to talk to one of my elders. You need to talk. No, no, they need to talk to you. Amen. They need to talk to you. Yeah. We, pastors are not here to do everything for you. Pastors are here to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Amen. Well, if you say an amen now, you're going to have to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But anyway, you know, I'm never, I never cease to be amazed uh, at the times we're led by the Spirit and don't know it. Um, what is it the one said, I, I never cease to be amazed? The times we're led by the Spirit and we don't really even know it. Um, I've gotten to the point through the years to where I just assume that he's pushing me somewhere. And if he's not, then nothing will happen. So I'll say, well, I was wrong about that one, but I'm not going to be wrong about the next one. And so he spoke to me. And that's the first time we'd ever spoken, wasn't it? And, and Tyler made the statement to me. He said, I appreciate all that you do in this community. And I thought, who are you? You know, I, I didn't know he was going to be a big shot, the big shot brother and everything else. But, but my heart was touched by him. And I just, I loved him from that moment on, not because of what he said to me, but because God put it there. God just put it there. And it never went away. I think next time we saw each other, a year or two later, wasn't it? Even see each other. But it never, never, matter of fact, I described him to Amy and she told me who he was after that one day. So you must have made an impression with her somehow. <laughs> Bottom line of this, we cannot do anything more important than to do what he puts before us to do. That's the most important thing we can do. And it's by that we justify our existence. There's nothing more important for you to do when you leave here today than if he puts you in a situation, which he's probably going to do sometime soon, because I mean that's why the words preached, is so you'll be aware. And when he puts you in that position, act on it. Act on it. Do what you're supposed to do. Now let's line it up, because I'm beginning to wind down. That, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. We, number one, we go about our daily duties to family, to others, to job, all that kind of stuff. That's the first thing we do. We establish, secondly, an ability to have our ears pricked by key words that God's saying. Now, don't ask me to tell you what those words are. You'll know them when you hear them. They're like secrets almost. And they funnel us into ministry. These words do. Third, upon hearing these words or being pushed by a situation or whatever, we respond. And the main part of all of that, number four, we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What is he saying to the church? What's he saying to the church today? Not what did he say in Revelation. Not what he said in in about those seven churches. What is he saying today to the people in the church? What's he saying to you? 
What's he, what, what direction is he giving you? And, that, and you need the ears to hear what he's saying to you. Some of these decisions we make are, are rough. Some of them are hard. Some of them you know nobody's going to understand. Amen? Amen? And some of them you know you're not even going to understand. Amen. That's right. There again. But today, here in this church today, he's spoken to a lot of you already. And because it's his will and it's his direction, he will equip you to do it. And I know people say, well, I hear folks say, God told me this or God told me that. We, we probably really shouldn't use that terminology. Because then people think, God ain't never told me nothing. And people tell me, uh, you know, through the years, you've got to hear everything if you pass it this long. People will say, God never said anything to me. I say, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. You just didn't recognize it because you were listening for a voice or something. You need to listen with your heart. You need to listen with your spirit. Amen? Amen. And then you'll hear him, you'll understand, and you'll act on what he's doing. And the more you act, the more he'll talk. He's looking for people who will respond to his voice. Um, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Now that doesn't mean when a miracle's just happened and you say, God did that. That's one place. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Wherever you are in trouble, it's good, bad, whatever it might be, acknowledge him. Say, I know you're here, Lord. I know you're here. I know you're in the middle of this. And if you'll do that every time, all the time, he will direct your path. Amen? Well, if you would, stand for just a minute. Let me pray for you. I just want you to get woke up because they got a little more going on in the service than this. So I want to pray for you and I want to ask you to just receive it. So Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to make clear to everybody here what you're trying to say. And if I fail to do that, then you let them hear what you're saying. That we're all equipped to do this. We're all equipped to do miracles. We're all equipped to do all these great things to set the captives free. We're all equipped to hear you. And you're ready to give us keys of the kingdom. So I ask now, Father, that Holy Spirit, I ask you to just come and just sweep over this place and just tell everybody in their ear right now, in their heart, I'm talking to you. Listen for me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, sir. Thank you.